Imagine what life is like when you wake up 365 days a year looking just like Santa Claus. A man named Sal Lizard has looked that way since he was in his 20s, and since that point, he has embraced playing Santa with an inspirational and contagious passion for the Christmas spirit. What else can you do in that situation? Yeah. Sal joins us now to talk about what it's like to live and breathe Christmas every day of the year. Good morning, Sal. Good morning, Chris, and good morning, Amanda. Wow, you look great. Okay, Sal, tell us how you got started and what a year in your life is like. Well, uh, I was a business owner down in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, and a radio station one day uh, invited me to come to an event and put on a Santa hat. And I never really thought I looked that much like Santa. I had white hair and a white beard, but, you know, I was just a young fella out there trying to make a dollar or two. But I found out when I put on the suit the next year and became Santa for the first time with a, a bunch of children that uh, there's a lot of magic that happens. And, and over the years, I continued to uh, help out the big guy in every way I could uh, by being there when he couldn't. And over the years, it seems like I just really morphed and, and kept looking more and more like Santa. So as I say, I embraced my inner Santa and we became one. Now, you've written this book, Being Santa Claus, What I've Learned About the True Meaning of Christmas. What are some stories that you can share with us about it this morning, Sal? Well, uh, you know, there's a lot of stories in there. Uh, most of them are pretty funny because children, uh, you know, uh, as has been said in the past, say the darndest things. And, and one little cute short story that I like to share with folks is it happened when I was at a store and I was standing in a checkout line and, and this little girl came over to me and she said, uh, what's your name? And I look over and I see her mother standing there smiling brightly and but I wasn't sure what her mother had said. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, honey, who do you think I am? And she said, I think you're Santa Claus. And I said, well, then you better be really, really good. <laughs> and she goes, I am. I'm not even peeing in my underpants. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I love the things kids say. Now you talk a little bit about not underestimating the power of children, not just what they say, but how have they maybe influenced you over the years? You know, it, it's really funny because in the beginning, I didn't know how to answer some of the questions and children have some pretty tough questions, but they want to believe. And so one of the things I've, uh, that one of the ways they've influenced me is, uh, they've really kept me on my toes and I have to think about what I'm saying to them. A lot of people don't realize just how much children listen to what they're saying. This is why I early on used to smoke and of course I was a social drinker but I quit doing that stuff because I didn't want to confuse children because you never know where they're going to pop up and they are watchful and so for that reason I've tried to be loyal to Santa and uh, portray him in a very positive way. And all that came about because of my concern for children and what I learned from them. Mm -hmm. Well, we have just another second or two. Any other funny stories that come to mind? I'm sure you've heard a thousand different things at a thousand different times. Well, you know, uh, there, there is one that uh, is not necessarily so funny, but there was a little, uh, a lady pulling a little boy towards me one day at a store and, and it was summertime and he was crying and putting his feet out in front of him because he didn't want to be dragged to me. And she said, Santa, would you tell little Johnny that he's been a bad boy and he's not getting anything for Christmas? And to me, that's probably the worst thing I could say to a child. So I got down on one knee and I said, now, Johnny, you know, I want you to be good and listen to your mother and I'll check up on you again to make sure you're being good. But let me remind mom of something. And I looked up and said, remember when you were his age and you got on my naughty list, you still turned out okay. <laughs> so she smiled and said, yes, you're right. And of course he smiled also. Yeah, well, there you go. Sal Lizard, I'm sure there are just so many stories like that in this book. We appreciate your time with us this morning. Oh, thank you. And uh, ha Merry Christmas to you and the folks out there in Kansas. Absolutely. Okay, Merry Christmas to you, thanks. All right, stay ho, with ho, ho, bye bye. <laughs> We got the ho, ho, ho. All right, stay with us. We'll be right back.